From Chicago, we invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring J. Carol Nash with Alan Reed. A year ago, when Luigi Basco left Italy to start his new life in America, he promised his mother that he would write her and tell her about his adventures. So now we look over Luigi's shoulder as he writes another letter to Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, yesterday I find out that Italian boys are very popular in America. All over, in the magazines, in the newspapers, on signs, is a picture of two beautiful American girls, both the crazy over the same Italian boy. On the bottom it say, which twin has a Tony? <laughs> but in America, Mamma Mia, everything is a big. In all the country, when a fellow has a cold, is it just a plain of cold? But in America, fella catches a cold in all directions. So he takes a four-away cold tablet. <laughs> Our countryman Pasquale, who bring me here and has spaghetti palace next to my antique store, he's now giving his fat daughter Rosa reducing pills. Last week, she said, take so many reducing pills, she gained a six pounds. <laughs> Mamma mia, you should see her. She is the only girl who can be in two places at the same time. <laughs> but don't worry, I'm still a single, and my business is all right. This afternoon, when Jimmy O'Connor, my 12-year-old general manager, come home from school, he say... Hello, boss. Hello, Jimmy. How was school today? Not so hard. Is there no steam heat in school, Jimmy? It's got nothing to do with that, boss. It's just an expression. What it means, not so hot, Jimmy? Well, it means, um, crummy. Crummy? What'd that mean? Crummy means not so hot. Oh, why you don't say so? <laughs> why you don't say so in the first place? Uh, we better skip it, boss. Not the so hot. Crummy. Skip it. Jimmy, sometimes I think there's two kinds of English in America. <laughs> kind you learn in day school and kind they teach me in a night school. Uh, what's doing around the store, Mr. Luigi? Did we get any mail? Sure. This morning, a postman bring me six pounds of mail. Six pounds? Three letters and a catalog from Cesar Robust. <laughs> He's a fine writer. Did you get any checks in those letters, boss? Checks? So who's going to send us checks? Doesn't anybody owe us money? It's the other way around. Do we owe anybody money? <laughs> Jimmy, sit down. We answer the letters. Okay, boss. Here's the first letter. From Kern Silver Company. Read it, Jimmy. Uh, dear Mr. Basco... With regard to your order of November 3rd, we cannot send you the candlesticks you ordered until you send us the money you owe us. Oh. We will send you the candlesticks when you send us the money. Uh-huh. What should I answer, boss? Say, please cancel order. It is impossible for me to wait that long. <laughs> Our next letter, Jimmy. Well, this one isn't important, boss. It's only a circular from Frank Hoover and son. Only? Jimmy, Hoover is important, a fella. Washington is the father of a country. Hoover is the father of a vacuum cleaner. But, Mr. Luigi, this Hoover wants to buy a two-volume encyclopedia for only $16. Write them as soon as I get $8, I send her for first book. But, boss, what good will one book do you? Then I'll be the smartest fellow in Chicago from letter A to letter M. <laughs> okay. And the sign it, Luigi Bosco and the Jimmy. Why the Jimmy, boss? Mr. Hoover signs his letter, Frank Hoover and his son... So I sign Luigi Basco and a Jimmy. You're just like a son to me. Thanks, boss. But where do you expect to get that $8? Don't worry, Jimmy. Soon we're going to have money. See this other letter? What about it? It's from my cousin Salvador, who has an antique store in Boston. Remember lady who ordered Admiral Perry mirror from me? Mrs. Ditson. She's been coming here every day. Soon we get the mirror, Jimmy, and we make a $200 profit. How do you figure $200? You're paying Salvador $200 for the mirror, and Mrs. Ditson's going to give you $300. That's only a $100 profit. Oh, no, Jimmy. I explain. 
When the lady pays me $300 and I pay $200, that's a $100 profit, which is $100 I don't expect. So? So, $100 I get, and $100 I don't expect, that's a $200 profit. <laughs> Boss, that's not good arithmetic. It's a what? Not good arithmetic. Maybe not, but I make more money that way. <laughs> but, Mr. Luigi, what does Salvador say about the mirror? I read your letter. Dear Cousin Luigi, last letter you send to me is to come here without a stamp, and I must pay letter carrier three cents. <laughs> if you're reading this letter now, then we're even. <laughs> uh, boss, get to the part about the mirror. Don't be impatient, Jimmy. Here's the more. Last week, my papa, who is 80 years old and he's not feeling too good, so doctor tells him he must smoke only one cigar a day. Papa does this, and now he's a feel worse because he never smoked a cigar before in his life. <laughs> but boss, when is the Admiral Perry mirror coming? Wait. Cousin Luigi, I'm sorry, but not surprised to hear about your troubles with the Pasquale. When I come to this country, Pasquale, he also tried to make me marry his larger daughter, Rosa. He promised me he'd make the biggest wedding in the history of Chicago. That's why I'm living in Boston. The mirror, boss, the mirror. Cousin Luigi, I'm very fond of you, and this year, I'm sending you Christmas presents. But, boss... Is the next, Jimmy. Admiral Perry Mirror is on the way. Cousin Luigi, your papa was my uncle. My papa was your uncle. You honest fella. And I trust you with my life, so Mira is coming to you, C.O.D. Hmm, <laughs> well, that's good. What's good about it? C.O.D. means collect on delivery. That's right, so I collect the mirror on delivery. Uh, you don't understand, boss. When the expressman delivers the mirror, you'll have to pay him $200 cash. Expressman? I don't owe expressman money. I owe Salvador money. Well, that's the way it works, though. You pay the expressman, and the company pays Salvador. You mean Salvador trusts express company more than he trusts his own cousin? <laughs> Looks that way. That's the Salvador. I'm so angry with him. I'm going to move him down from a first cousin to a second cousin. <laughs> What's more important is where are you going to get the $200? I don't know. First, I better call up express company and find out when they bring Admiral Perry Mirror. Okay. Not the Salvatore with his fine Christmas present. But I get the two hundred dollars to pay for the mirror. Maybe when express men are giving me C O D, I give him I O U. Hello, Miss Basco. Hello, Mrs. Dixon. I'm uh, glad to see you. Mr. Basco, has my Admiral Perry mirror come in yet? Well, you see. I uh, can't understand it. It's only coming from Boston. Why should it take so long to get here? Business is slow. <laughs> now I've been very patient about this. It's been a month since I gave you a $50 deposit, and I don't have the mirror. Lady, I don't have the $50. I give it to Pasquale for the rent. Mr. Basco, really? How can you run a business that way? I don't know. It's very hard. <laughs> Please, Mrs. Dixon. Is there nothing to worry about? Cousin Salvador... Hey, he... Oh, hello, Mrs. Dixon. Hello, young man. What did express some, uh, people say, Jimmy? Oh, they're going to deliver the Admiral Perry mirror this t today. Today? That's wonderful. See, Mrs. Dixon, I thought there's nothing to worry about. They said it would be here no later than 5 o'clock. It's on the truck. <laughs> you see, Mrs. Dixon? <laughs> it's a funny country. When Admiral comes by truck and instead of boat. <laughs> it's about time. I'll be back at 5, Mr. Basco. Goodbye. A lady? Yes? Maybe you like to pay for mirror now? Oh, that's ridiculous. I'll pay you when I get the mirror, not before. But if you're giving me $250 now, then a Mrs. Dixon, you're absolutely sure to get the mirror. Look, Mr. Basco, I've already given you a $50 deposit. Maybe you'd like to give me five or more $50 deposits. I should say not. If that mirror isn't here by five o'clock sharp, then I'll thank you to return my $50. You're welcome, my lady. That was a good try, boy. Jimmy, you know something? What? Things is not so hot. <laughs> National Express. Luigi Basco. I'm Luigi Basco. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got a box for you. Jimmy, must be Admiral Perry in a box. If there's an admiral in there, he must be a midget. 
Thank you very much. Goodbye. Oh, not so fast. G-O-D. It's a little matter of $200. If it's so little, then don't worry. Look, mister, all I know is I've got to get $200 or the box goes back on the truck. Please, Mr. Expressman, wait for five minutes. Sit down, here. Read the Sears robot catalog. Where are you going, boss? I go see Pasquale. Luigi, my friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. What's the matter, Luigi? You look a little nervous. I'm not nervous. Uh, I'm worried. Then you come to the right to party. Anytime you got to worry, my little man, or you come to see Pasquale. Pasquale, then you do me a favor. Huh? Anything, Luigi. You want something, you ask for it. I'm living only to make you happy. Then, then Pasquale, Anything, I... Luigi. My house is your home. My bread is your food. My daughter Rosa, she's your wife. She's an actor, my wife. <laughs> I'm just thinking out loud. Pasquale... I'm not coming over to talk about the Rosa. I'm coming over to talk about me. All right, fine. We talk about you. How would you like to marry Rosa? How did we get back to Rosa so quick? <laughs> it wasn't easy. <laughs> All right, Pasquale. Then we talk about Rosa. Fine. I'm listening with my ears wide open. How would Rosa's father like to lend me $200? My ears are just suddenly close up. <laughs> Please, Pasquale, I must have $200 right away. What the for? You need $200? For Admiral Perry. That's the matter. He loses a job? No. Admiral Perry, he's dead. Then what for? He needs $200. I explain. $200 is to pay for mirror. Luigi, you crazy shaver like everybody else with a 10 cents a mirror. <laughs> is, is it not the mirror for shaving? It's antique. I just get from Cousin Salvador. Who... Stop. Don't mention his name. I don't like a fella who refuses to marry Rosa. You're going to go through life for not liking a lot of fellas, Pasquale. <laughs> Luigi, what's your cousin, Salvatore, got to do with a mirror? It's a business. Salvador sends me a picture of Admiral Perry Mirror and what I... What was... the kind of a picture is this? You don't understand antique business. Sometime one dealer, he sends another dealer a picture of antique instead of antique. That's a fine... Next time a fellas are coming to my restaurant, he orders a spaghetti and a meatballs, I'm going to serve him a smaller snapper shot on a plate. <laughs> is, is it like this, Pasquale? Lady, Mrs. Ditson, she see a picture of a mirror, she give me $50 deposit. Cousin Salvador sent me a mirror, expressman to bring a mirror COD. So I need a $200. You understand, Pasquale? Sure, Luigi, I understand it. All except the one to take it. What's that, Pasquale? Where are you going to get the $200? <laughs> That's why I come here, Pasquale. Goodbye, Luigi. Please, Pasquale. Express man is away. I don't give you $200. I suppose you don't sell it a mirror. Then I'm stuck. But, Pasquale, lady is coming at 5 o'clock. She's going to give me $250 more. You mean she's a pay $300 for what you pay $200? That's right, Pasquale. I pay you rent with a $50 deposit. Now I make another $50. You make $100 a profit. Sure. See, I'm a good businessman. You're lending me $200 now? Luigi, I'm thinking. You see the little wheels are going around in my head? I'm a dizzy watching. <laughs> All right. I lend you the money on a one condition. Please, Pasquale, don't bring a Rosa up again. Who's it talking about a Rosa? I'm talking a strictly business between the two friends, the two countrymen. I've decided to lend you the money on a 50-50 deal. What do you mean a 50-50 deal? Well, you make a $50 profit, we split. 40 for you, for me, and 10 for you. But, Pasquale, that's not a 50-50. Luigi, how much is a 40 and a 10? 50. And how much is a 10 and a 40? 50. So it's a 50-50. <laughs> okay. Okay, Pasquale. Express man is waiting. Here is your $200, my little partner. And remember, I charge only the same interest as the bank, 6%. That's right. Only bank charges 6% a year, and you charge 6% a minute. <laughs> America, I love you. You like a papa to me. From ocean to ocean. Well, Mr. Expressman... I come, here's your $200. Oh, boss, that's great. Here's your receipt, Mr. Bass. Thank you. Jimmy, give me a screwdriver. I'll yeah, open yeah, a box. Yeah, boss. 
There. Here's a lot of sawdust, Jimmy. Now I pull out the mirror. Take it easy. Jimmy! Oh, boss, the mirror! Mamma mia! Me, Pasquale, and Admiral Perry, we all the broke. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in the last two days, two young entertainers have gotten their big break in show business on Don Amici's new CBS afternoon show, Your Lucky Strike. Every afternoon, Monday through Friday, from now on, Don will be here on CBS, introducing three or four promising young performers, singers, actors, and comedians each day. After you've listened to them, Don will phone three CBS listeners daily, asking you to vote on which entertainer gets the big break. Listen tomorrow and every weekday, Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to Your Lucky Strike, starring Don Amici over most of these same CBS network stations. And now for the second act of Luigi Basco's Adventures in Chicago, we turn to page two of his letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, Mira is a broken. And I pay $200 to see Admiral Perry lose his first battle. If he sees what happened to Mira, Admiral Perry goes right out and sinks Express Company. But Jimmy, he tells me to go to Express Company and maybe I get back my $200. So I go. And Mamma Mia, they ask me so many questions. And they send them to so many different people. Mr. Basco, was the damaged article a dead animal, bird, or fish? It was a broken mirror. Mr. Basco, was the damaged article spoiled meat, eggs, or poultry? It was a broken mirror. Mr. Basco, was the damaged article a flower, fruit, or vegetable? It was a broken mirror. Mr. Basco, was the damaged article a broken mirror? If I say yes, do I get the money? First, how was it packed? Fiber box, wooden box, crate, corrugated, burlap, barrel, bale, hamper. Please, Mr. Bosco, stop me. Please, keep talking. I'm learning new words. <laughs> Are you familiar with the word triplicate? What this means? I'm going to make three copies of this report. One goes to the main office, the second goes to Boston, and the third goes to Mr. Fitch. What the Mr. Fitch does with his copy? He sends it to Mr. Hubble. And a Mr. Hubble? He sends it to the claims clerk. Who's the claim clerk? Me. That's so good. <laughs> That's so good. You nice a fella. You give me the money now. I go home. Oh, uh, just a minute, Mister Bosco. But uh, please, I must have a two hundred dollar by five o'clock today. Sure. You see, Pasquale, he loaned me two hundred dollars. Yes, yes, Mister to... Bosco. You'll get your money, but not without a certain amount of red tape. I'm in a hurry. I take the money without tape. Patience, <laughs> patience, Mister Bosco. Patience. There are just these two forms, the exception report and the joint inspection report. Oh, Mamma mia, I fill out the report when you give me the money. These things take time, but rest assured, Mr. Bosco, National Express will make good your claim. Are you sure? Certainly. The National Express Company has never yet failed to pay an honest claim. We're as solid as the Rock of Gibraltar, and you know the Rock of Gibraltar. If I don't pay Pasquale his money by five o'clock, then he's going to make me marry the Rock of Gibraltar. <laughs> Hello, Luigi, my little 50-50 partner. How's our little business deal coming along? Pasquale, you said that already. What's the matter with you, Luigi? You're shaking it like a little puppy in a rain. It's a bad news, Pasquale. What's a bad news? In a 50 in a minute, it's a 5 o'clock. Lady comes into your store and I pay you $250. You give me $240, you keep the rest for yourself. What's so bad a news about that, eh? Pasquale, the mirror is a broken. Well, that's a... What do you say? Please, Pasquale, I'm a shaking like a little puppy in the rain. Then I'm a dog catcher. <laughs> who is the busting that the mirror? I don't know. Then give me back my $200. I know, God. Then who got? Express Company. Go back to Express Company. How much just to come back? Go back again. Companies say they pay. When? After they file me in a triplicate. <laughs> Pasquale, please. Luigi... I don't want to get excited. I'm a trying to be calm. Give me my money! 
Pasquale, I know got. Get? Where? Lend from somebody. I don't know anybody. Pasquale, you're my only friend. Any fellow who's a friend of yours, he's an old friend of mine. <laughs> I hate him myself. Pasquale. Pasquale, please. I pay you back your $200. I, I save the money from antique business. Uh-huh. I... It's the no more antique business. Huh? I'm going to break it down at the wall between your store and my store. And I'm going to make one big spaghetti palace. Oh. And what's going to happen to my antique? Every Tuesday, we have antique night. One antique free with a two and a half dollars of dinner. <laughs> what's well, is that? Then what I do? Don't worry, Luigi. I got a big plan for you. You're going to work for me. I'm going to buy you a brand new second-hand tuxedo. Also, white the shirts and a nice little shoestring tie. And are you going to be my French head waiter? But I'm not the French. I changed your name from Luigi to Pierre. <laughs> You're going to stand in the door, and Rosa, she's going to sit at the cash register and keep a one eye on you and a one eye on the money. Is this your last word, Pasquale? That's my final sentence. And this, I don't take your word for it. You sign a note. What kind of note? Promissory a note. What the for? If you don't pay me my money by five o'clock, then you promise to marry Rosa. What do you say, my son? Okay, okay, Papa, I sign. Where you been all day, boss? What time is it, Jimmy? Uh, three minutes to five. We spend the last three minutes together, Jimmy, huh? What are you talking about? When a clock strikes a five. Is it good to buy antique store? Hello, Rosa. Didn't the express company give you back the money? By the time they pay me, I'm going to be a head waiter by the name of Pierre. Hello, Mr. Lasko. Hello, Mr. Ditson. It's five o'clock. Do you have my mirror? Oh, it's a long story, Mr. Ditson. You see, never I Never mind, of... never mind. Just return my $50, please. But I, I don't have the $50. Hello, Luigi, my friend. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Five o'clock on the dot. Pasquale, here's, a, here's a Mrs. Edetson. Mrs. Edetson, it's really nice to meet you. Why? <laughs> Why? Because of your hard luck is to make my pleasure possible. It's the happiest moment of my life. Sorry, I know can of say the same. I'd like my deposit, Mr. Bassett. I'm going to give you the $50, Mrs. Dixon, and I'm going to give you, Luigi, a little sunshine. Rosa. Looks like a big storm and not a sunshine. <laughs> Rosa! 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 You called me, Papa? <laughs> say hello to Luigi. <laughs> hello, Luigi. <laughs> Hello, Rosa. <laughs> Mrs. Edison, it's given me great pleasure to present to the future Mrs. Abasco. <laughs> I'm glad you accept the Rosa. Now is everything is settled. Shake your hands with a Luigi. Another package for you, Mr. Bersko. For me? Where it's from? Same place as the last one, Boston. I don't pay to your day for any more broken things. Come here. Huh? See? Huh? You take a $200 from me for broken a mirror. That? Sure. Look, a hundred little silver pieces. Those are Christmas decorations. That must be the mirror in the box I just brought in. And the cousin Salvador put the COD on the wrong package. Say, he said he was sending you a present. Jimmy, bring him a screwdriver. Here you are, boss. Mamma mia. Mamma mia, I hope. Look. Is Admiral of Perry Mirror, Mrs. Dixon? Oh, it's beautiful. Now you know why I wanted it so bad. It's all yours, Mrs. Dixon. Oh, thank you, Mr. Basco. Now, the, here's your money. Thank you. Pasquale, here's your money. But a Luigi, my friend. I now don't... I tear up my promissory note, sir. Goodbye, Rose. Sir. Uh, uh, should I say goodbye, Papa? Goodbye, Pasquale. Hey, what do you mean, a goodbye, Luigi? Sure. You're going to tear down an antique store and make one of the biggest spaghetti palace, you know? No, Luigi. I've been thinking if you can sell one mirror and make a hundred dollars of profit... Yes, sir, Pasquale? I'm going to tear down a spaghetti palace and make one of the big antique store. Mamma mia! <laughs> Oh, 
So, Mamma Mia, everything will work out fine. Lady pay for me. Pasquale make money and he giving me part of it. Pasquale say he going to give me rosa for Christmas. <laughs> but I don't worry. She want to fit under my tree. <laughs> Next week, I think I go in a record place and I make a little record of letter and I send you. Listen carefully to my voice. This way you learn a perfect English pronunciation. In a little while, Mamma Mia, you'll speak as good as me. Also, is a one more away here to learn English language. So next week, I send you alphabet soup so you have a good soup and learn alphabet at the same time. <laughs> when you learn a few words good, make up a sentence and write it a couple of times. I make up one for myself and is now my favorite. It's only a few words. But the mean a lot it goes like this. Luigi Basco is a very, very glad to be in America. P.S. You're loving your son, Luigi. Be sure to listen next week at this time over most of these stations when Luigi Basco writes another letter to Mama Basco describing his adventures in America. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is written by High Craft and Cy Howard and stars J. Carol Nash as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Music is under the direction of Wilbur Hatch. Friends, have you given your donation to the Red Feather Campaign yet? Remember, the community chest helps everyone. With a goal of $7,550,000 for the nation to adequately supply each organization belonging to the community chest, it's the duty of every citizen to contribute generously. Remember, instead of numerous fundraising campaigns, your one contribution to the community chest covers them all thus eliminating the nuisance of continual contributions. So when you are asked to give to the Red Feather Campaign this year, give enough. Everybody gives, everybody benefits. And as a final reminder, your one yearly donation must cover a period of 12 months. So take time enough to give enough to the Community Chest Red Feather Campaign. Funniest, fastest nightclub entertainment in America will be yours in just a little while when comedian Maury Amsterdam makes his regular Tuesday night appearance on CBS. For years, Maury Amsterdam has been one of the great nightclub comics of Broadway. Now on his CBS Maury Amsterdam show, Maury introduces you to his own club, where the funniest things of all happen backstage. All you have to do is to get by the songwriting doorman and you'll be in Maury's Cafe on the Maury Amsterdam Show a little later tonight over most of these same CBS network stations. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.